This is Dubai, with its spirited combination of the ultra-modern and a past as old as human history itself. I'm here by invitation. The brief is bring your toothbrush and your driver's license and we will look after everything else. And come and drive something amazing in an astounding place. That was good enough for me. What they didn't tell me was what a vehicle would they give me to drive. So would a trip around the city give me any clues as to what it is? One thing about the Arabs, they like their camels, but they love their cars, and especially if they are four-wheel drive. This is my host, Sean Mayer. A bit of a surprise, South African expat, been living here for well over a decade. And he's taken over as director, producer, doing a good job at it too. So I see there are two, there's the top and then there's the scarf. So actually, it's the same, right? So this is Saudi, yeah. typically, and this yeah. is Jordanian with the tassels at the bottom. Uh -huh. So typically you'd only be wearing the one, and in a sandstorm you would cover up the face, right? So only your eyes stick out. So camels have it naturally, they've got big long eyelashes, protect from the, from the sand. Right. We as humans, not so good. Okay. Um, and hence we use these. So here's one for the rest of the trip. Brilliant, thank I'll you. show you how to use it later, and okay. if the wind blows, we'll cover you up, and uh, that's all we'll see. Well, we'll do it anyway. Good. Excellent, but this is getting me no nearer to guessing what vehicle they're going to give me. Ah, this might work. We're going to go on a boat. We, I tell you stop, I tell you go, we take each shot. We have to come outside here so we can make parking, and then you must stop. It's pretty stunning. I think it's one of those. Isn't this amazing? I had no idea that Dubai was like this. I, mean, I always thought it was just a shop place to come shopping. But this, the old city, almost like they built a brand new city because the old city couldn't expand anymore. And the old city. I mean, what we're filming here with the dows, these dows um, transport maize, fish, all kinds of food, material to the Middle East. This is not history. This happens right now. And it is nestled amongst the, the skyscrapers of Dubai. It's amazing. Such a surprise. Okay, okay, I've been told. No time to lose. Rush off and change your shoes and go down this enormous zip slide between two skyscrapers. Oh, I didn't mention, I changed my voice as well. Okay, <laughs> enough of that girl stuff. I've asked Sean to take me to where I can see some of Dubai's finest cars. So he's brought me here, a small camping store. Uh, but this is a surprise as well. So I'm the example, like this. Mr. White. I say thank you so much. Oh, we'll take from the warm one, yeah? Oh, yes, do that, yes. Don't spill it. <laughs> <laughs> one. They, they are so beautiful. I mean, you know, there's no... There's no holding back on the ornateness and the, and the, the show offiness. So, generally, the campsite will be set up a large campsite, yeah. and um, 
the locals would go over the weekend, spend the entire weekend over there, be fully equipped, solar panel generators, as you can see the store has got vastly different uh, camping gear than what we used to. Yeah. So it's not a camp set up and leave, or a two day camp set up and leave, it's a permanent fixture that gets put down in the desert for the whole winter month. And all the luxury from home, including your tea and coffee. I trust we're not going to be doing this. No. We're going to be moving along daily, right. exploring expedition, as okay. you say. Oh, wow. Thank you. I'll have one of these. Okay, this looks promising. This enormous blue building, the size of, I don't know, 100 football pitches, is Dubai's auto market. It's where the rich come to buy their cars. Right, uh, Mercedes Galanderwagen, Range Rover, Range Rover. Oh, Range Rovers. Maybe it's a Range Rover would be quite nice. Defender. Ah, Galander. He's showing me a lot of Mercedes Galanderwagens. Maybe this is a hint. Listen, Patrol. That'll be interesting. Oh, Hummer. Hummer. That'll be. No, that won't be anything. I won't bother about that. Uh, ah, Mercedes Galanderwagen. Uh, uh, oh, six wheel drive. Would they really. They wouldn't give me a six-wheel drive. Uh, Jeep, Jeeps would be really good. Galanderwagen. Uh, oh, what's this? Oh, oh, oh dear. Oh my, I <coughs> find it difficult to control myself. It's a Porsche 918 Spider. Yes, it's that. It has to be. It has to be that. Uh, okay, I'll I'll settle with the G wagon. Still, it could be worse. Finally, this is where I have been told to expect delivery of my mystery four x four, in which we will cross the desert. Okay, I'm going to pretend that I never saw that. We are at NSV, a Dubai company specializing in the design and manufacture of car accessories. While we wait, we've been offered some coffee. Hmm, is that another clue? So, um, so the vehicle isn't here yet, I believe. It's, uh, okay, so can, can I have a look around? Absolutely. Oh, okay. The vehicle's on its way. Because I don't know what they're going to give me. I mean, they've told me it's not off the shelf. And they've said that they're, they're very confident that I'm going to love it. But is it, is it a Jeep? Is it a Land Cruiser? I know a little bit about the, the Arabs and the way they like to modify their vehicles. And they really sometimes go so over the top. It's just unbelievable some of the creations they come up with in these countries. I have no idea what I'm going to get. In fact, I haven't even, I'm too scared to guess. Oh well, while I wait, I guess it's time to look at some of the accessories they produce. And of course, these delicious old Land Cruisers. This Land Cruiser is believed to be the only 1958 original unmodified Land Cruiser of its type that is still running today. And why it's significant to me is that this green was originally done for the military and only available to the public in the 1960s. And it's exactly the same green that I chose for my Land Cruiser 78 that I built from 2011. This particular one was uh, restored in Malaysia. There are Land Cruiser fans absolutely everywhere. Oh, there comes my vehicle. It's a Land Cruiser. Oh, it's a Land Cruiser. It's a six-wheel drive cruiser. They must know me quite well. Hi, Andrew. Welcome to NZ. And this is your NZ 6x6 Land Cruiser. Totally built by us. What motor? Four litre petrol. And you can choose it in a diesel turbo as well. Payload? Three and a half tons. Six-wheel drive? Six-wheel drive, permanently. <laughs> this is going to be fun. Now, of course, left-hand drive with a very glitzy, shiny steering wheel. OK, 
radio stick on that side of the car. I get used to this, definitely get used to this. So we'll be spending the next seven days in the deserts of uh, United Am Arab Emirates and Oman. Back at Sean's place and it's time to pack everything into the vehicles. Okay, well, we're leaving at daybreak tomorrow and now we've got to pack all of the sponsored gear into the vehicle and this is obviously a bedroll and apparently it is a Arabic favorite and I'll show it to you later when we're actually camping with it. Try them out. We'll no, we'll do, device. you know something, I'm looking... We Our plan is to leave at daybreak and head straight out to the dunes to give the 6x6 a tryout. These guys really pulled out the stops. They, they did everything that I wanted. And it's got six wheels! The vehicle I'm driving is a Toyota Land Cruiser 79 pickup with a 6x6 conversion designed by Multidrive Australia. Multidrive's export agency is NSV, the company that loaned us this example. Those of you that have noticed that the vehicle has miraculously changed from a beige color to a white color, well, that's what happens when you spend a long time in the desert sun. Truth is, the beige one was sold that afternoon. Lucky for us, they had another one in stock. This one has the 1HZ 4.2 naturally aspirated diesel engine, but with a Safari Turbo Edition. So anyway, there it is. We're heading off into the desert and we're going into the Aumamum conservation area where apparently there's quite a lot of wildlife. And we're gonna, I'm gonna give it the first trial on the dunes, on the sand. Um, I'm not gonna let down the tires or anything at this stage. I wanna feel the vehicle before I start changing it. So, ah, here we go. <laughs> uh. <laughs> so, you're the wife. <laughs> but yeah. gets dragged along on all of these things. Talk to me about that. I don't know if it's as much as dragging along. I want to go with it <laughs> because I really, really, really enjoy the outdoors. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, what I've done, uh, this guy's driving their horses. <laughs> What I've done is I've actually purposely got it, got it stuck. I purposely went up a dune in the wrong gear, low range first, to actually try and get the thing to bury itself. Because I want to see the 6x6 transmission working. The differential between axle 2 and 3 locks itself automatically. Let's look at that again. The rear axle drives first, less than half a rotation, and the second axle is engaged. I also want to see how this very clever suspension works. With a normal six-wheel drive, when the vehicle is on a slope like this, almost all of the load is carried on the second axle. With this system, the axle articulates enough so weight stays distributed amongst both second and third axles. I can smell something. The engine's working hard. Um, and got out of the car and it's immediately, it's, it's, it's the tyres. The tyres are actually starting to, to, they're quite hot. And they're starting to smell. It's because of the constant grinding in the sand. It's, it's very heavy on tyres. And as amazing as it performed without, with normal pressures, mid height of the day, hot sun, I'm getting, I'm battling too much, stretching the car too much. And it's quite hot. Great to be back in the desert though. But I'm starting to really enjoy this vehicle. But how good is it really in the sand? Okay, 
I mean, I had to do it. I mean, come on. I had to get a six-wheel drive stuck. At least I could then say in my resume that I've actually got a six-wheel drive stuck. But I did, I just took the power off at completely the wrong moment and allowed it to breast and to see if it would pull itself out and it won't. <laughs> so we, we're gonna take a we're gonna take a tuck. You know something? And the wheel's going the back front wheel's gonna move this far and you're free. So yeah. so we should just you could just do a gentle tuck down the hill. That's fine. Now when you, you're you're driving and you ask somebody for a uh, a pull recovery, the person, the vehicle doing the pulling actually should be the one making the final decision on whether the straps are good, whether the shackles are good, whether the, all of the connections are good. Not the person being recovered. Because there is an equal chance that one of these two vehicles could get damaged. Uh, and therefore, if there's an equal chance, he must be the one deciding on how he's going to help me, not me deciding on he, how he's going to help me. That's the wrong way to do it. And so uh, I'm kind of leaving it up to him, but he knows what he's doing. And, and as long as I'm happy as well, he makes the final decision. That's the way it should be. This is a American off-road or something. Snatch rope, 2,800, 900 pounds. American product, and I understand it's damn good. Right. Let's feed it through the safety. Cable ties, I'll check them away. The rope on this side so I can see when it gets. Alright, so uh, when you get in, yeah. speak to me on the radio. Right. No. The wind has come up a bit, so it's time to okay. try some traditional protection. Um, yeah. Huh? yeah, so just find your find yeah. your spot so there. Find the middle. And then yeah. drop these two, drop your hands, yeah. and then fold one over like you fold a scarf. The point, yeah. Okay, I'll get there. Okay, okay can I film it now? No. Oh. <laughs> I don't look like a complete idiot. This here, you try and find this piece to get onto okay. your forehead here. Okay. okay, so as you're holding it, it's doing okay. that. Yeah. Alright. Are you rolling? And again, to feel one with the nation, I will take this, it's just basically a square fabric cloth, and put it over there, and then I flap that on that side. Don't laugh, it's the first time I've ever done it. And we do that, and then we go driving. Perfect. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> All right, we're camel, we're chasing some camels. We're going to a tree over there and we're going to try and we're going to try and have a look at some camels. There it is. Looks just like a cigarette packet, doesn't it? These could be wild camels, they could also be domestic. And these are Arabian gazelles. Oh, it seems that while we've been enjoying the local wildlife, Sean has been digging holes in the desert. You know what they say in the desert? If you don't succeed, try a few more times and then try and think of something else to do. Yeah. Over the top. And then keep it stiff like that. Right. right. Drop your hands now. Drop drop my and hands. Then, yeah. And then, and then grab, that. grab a corner. Grab it, the corner goes like that. that and then the other one. And that go. does that. Then you can so readjust now, the top. There we okay. go. Now throw that and over your shoulder. I can put a hat on to stop the wind blowing it away. Yeah. Okay, enough of that. I'm clearly not very good at it. Let's go and find a campsite. Sean stuck again. 
This time it's the 6x6's turn to, to give a helping hand. Sean's Land Cruiser has sunk into a hole, an invisible patch of incredibly soft sand. In one second. There we go. Not far off, we found a flat spot suitable for a camp. That was a good day's driving. Very good indeed. And only just in time. So we're actually right on the edge of the border of Oman and the United Arab Emirates. And these red dune fields are actually full of people. There are a lot of people around, farms, and uh, so we're not actually, it feels very remote. We're actually not remote at all. And the legend has it that the wind always stops about 30 minutes after sunset. Getting a bit chilly, first night in the desert. Apart from the pylons, what an amazing place. Tomorrow, we cross into Oman, across the border, and we head into the mountains. That's what we have for us over the next few days. Well, it's early morning. <clears throat> First day out in the desert. <clears throat> Forgive my appearance this morning. Makeup hasn't arrived yet. Just really, they're just so unreliable. This morning, first morning now, quite close to the Armani border, uh, which is in that direction. There, um, amazing landscape. There's an enormous green area. It looks like, looks like England with sand dunes over there. Just green, green, enormous farmlands. We parked last night amongst the uh, towering pylons quite close to the border so we wanted to we wanted to find a, a lonely spot to camp and well this is the one we could we could find sitting here in the desert I reminded myself I think as, as I've grown up I've I've learned to accept the moment enjoy the actual moment you know so often I mean I did anyway when I was younger it was always about what next what next what next and I, you know, took very little time to smell the roses, as the cliche goes. Um, and these trips I've been doing the last three or four years and shooting these films, so very much aware of um, the, the, the fact that I'm in the moment, that I'm in the desert. I'm actually in the desert now. Just enjoying the desert now. Really trying to suck it all up. And acutely aware of the terrible state of my hair. Anyway, to take one, you have to take the other. So where it is. <laughs> 